I'm Mark from Ameren. I work at Mangamoos mostly as a composer, but I also do mixing and implementing uh, our interactive music in FMOD. I am Matthijs Groten, working as a composer here at Mangamoos. And I like to compose for films and I like to compose uh, with orchestral sounds and combine that with synthetic elements. Well, I think it's really important to, uh, to talk with the client uh, uh, to get a real sense of the type of music that he wants. So perhaps he has uh, a, a track in his mind that he really likes, that he wants to do like a similar uh, music piece. Maybe uh, he has a, a type of instrument that he wants, uh, whatever. Uh, we try to get a grasp of, of the concept that he has in his mind and especially um, get a sense of the feeling that he wants for like a, a type of scene, a type of level in the game. When we have that, we have, when we have a clear briefing, uh, that's the moment where we uh, start composing. I guess that when you don't have a clear purpose, you don't really know what type of music you can make. Um, and I guess um, the music doesn't really, isn't going to fit uh, the idea of the scene. So like, first of all, we, we, we have to start getting a grasp of what the director wants, what the, the, the game developer wants, what the publisher wants. And, from that moment, we can start working. I really like to start from uh, a voice demo. So maybe I have something in my head and then uh, I record it on my phone. And when I get to the studio, I make sure that I have a, a, a nice project uh, with colors, with icons, with everything. I'm really like uh, neat like that. And when I come to the studio, I listen to the voice memo. I put it in Logic and then uh, I'll start working and, uh, on the instruments to uh, transform that voice demo into a tune. Uh, really work on the melody, because it doesn't matter what great software you use, if the basic arrangement doesn't work, uh, the finished product isn't going to work uh, either. No, for me, it's not. Um, I, I don't have a kind of a ritual, but I think the, uh, what is important for me is, is the traveling from home to the studio. Um, I, uh, I listen to music a lot. When I'm walking uh, from the central station to the studio, there are lots of sound uh, around me. Uh, so I, I pass by the cons conservatory. There are always uh, like musicians uh, warming up, playing uh, exercises, and that inspires me a lot. And if, if I uh, am arriving at the studio, um, it feels like like a, a fresh new begin if it's quiet here and then I can start. When I start, it is uh, really helpful for me to take the time to experiment with uh, things. So uh, I really like to start with uh, just some sounds. Uh, we have a big library uh, recorded by our uh, sound designers. And um, I'd like to, to uh, take those sounds, some of the, those sounds, and reverse it, uh, distort it, play with it, and uh, make something completely different with those sounds. And just by experimenting, I get ideas. And yeah, I think that's a good natural way to, to, to start, just experiment. Sometimes it can really work to uh, put on an ambience of like a forest or a lake um, and just keep it playing um, and uh, work to that recording and it can make your tracks feel a lot more alive and um, organic instead of just software instruments. We are a team of uh, five different people with each uh, their own qualities and uh, a lot of us like to work at home of course, now because of the corona crisis, uh, everybody needs to work at home as well. Uh, and we try to use this uh, space mainly as like a mixing uh, place where we do maybe the last 10% of a, of a track when we are at home and we feel like, okay, this is uh, getting towards a finished product. Then we go here, we have some nice monitors, uh, we have a quiet space, and then we can finish the tracks. Um, I think that's the main reason right now for the studio. Of course, it used to be also a meeting space where we could receive clients, talk to them about uh, their pro product and uh, talk about their ideas. 
but of course recently it's not a, a, a thing anymore. It's important to mention that uh, we like to uh, collaborate as much as possible as a team and it's really important to um, we, we set up a server uh, which allows us to uh, sync files really easily and uh, that way we can exchange uh, our projects. And so it, uh, it makes it possible to work for everybody to work from home and came here in the studio as, as it's needed. I think the server is the main thing in our company. It's the most important thing we have because it makes sure that everybody's on the same page, everybody can work on each and every product that they want. So it's really, really important for us. Yeah, I think we, we are not the generation uh, of uh, composing with pen and paper. I think uh, we are the generation of, of the, the digital stuff and the, the computers. Technology is really important for us. So I think as a composer, uh, the technology, the software, the plugins, those are your tools and you have to know how to use those tools. So um, yeah, you, you have to know which knob you have to turn to reach a certain sound, for example. Or I mainly use the piano. I like to start a tune just sitting at the piano uh, and work on chords first and melody first. And when I have uh, a basic concept, then I will um, continue to work on it in uh, my day, DAW. I don't use pen or paper. Um, I've always worked in like the digital domain, but sometimes we, we do use um, soloists or uh, recordings that we have from outside or whatever to spice up the productions and make it less digital. I used to be full of inspiration all the time and I wanted to compose all the time and uh, now it's a little bit different. Now you always make music for a specific game and uh, you're not making the music that you want but you make the music that the clients want. Um, so first of all it's really important to have a clear image of what they want um, and uh, to find music that could be uh, similar to what you would like to have in the end product and then um, get inspired by the music uh, that could be in the game. Uh, could be uh, the type of instrument, uh, maybe a, a time signature, a tempo, maybe work from there. Yeah, I think for me uh, is uh, talking with the director or the client or the, the game designers is really essential to uh, get a feeling about how they uh, want the music and by uh, talking with them and uh, ask questions about um, uh, about the energy in the game um, yeah you get another cre creative input and that gives you gives you ideas uh, but it can also be just looking at, at the screen or playing the game without sound mm -hmm. Um, your composer's mind is already beginning to, to make some music in your head. So that, that's also a good option. Like on, on our most recent products, we've always planned a meeting to sit down with the client and only discuss the music. So nothing about finances, nothing about planning, just um, an inspiring meeting yeah, so about their brainstorm. ideas. Yeah. 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 When I get stuck, I think I don't force myself to keep working. It doesn't work for me. Um, so either I take a break, I go outside. Of course, we're in the city center of Utrecht. So it's really nice surroundings here. You just take a walk, 15, 30 minutes, and you come back and you're all refreshed and ready to go. Um, other times it can work to work on an other product project. We usually have multiple projects running at the same time. And for one, you need to edit the voiceover. For one, you need to do mixing. For one, you need to do composing uh, or create a concept. And uh, the, the variation in uh, activities that I can do here ha really helps me to stay creative and stay inspired. If you really got stuck, uh, my natural reaction is to, to just work harder and solve the problem, but that's, actually never gonna work um, for me. So uh, I need to get out of the project. Uh, and so I'd like, I like to, um, to go out and take a walk and clear my mind. 
but we have also the option to give it to another composer. So uh, yeah, that's it's really nice to have that uh, we have different composers. And if you get stuck on a project, you give it to uh, to your colleague, and then he is uh, starting to work on it. The main thing to find out if a track is finished or not is when you're working on it and you're trying new stuff, you're adding instruments, you're changing notes, you're changing chords, you're um, mixing, you're adding new effects and nothing uh, seems to work, nothing seems to make it better. Then you, you kind of hit a wall and then you find out okay, maybe I should just stop. Maybe it's the best that it can be. And uh, a lot of times uh, simplicity works best. So when you have a couple of instruments that are really essential to the composition and nothing else, uh, those tracks are usually the best. So uh, I think I get more and more experience in finding the moment that a track is good enough. It's Of course, it's never finished, but Usually, uh, I can recognize the moment that it should be finished, and then we go into mixing. Of course, we have always deadlines, so uh, it is finished when the deadline is there. But um, yeah, it, it can happen that you are not happy with the music when the deadline is there. So is it finished when you think it's finished, or is it finished when your client uh, says, OK, I'm happy with it? Well, of course, we only work for games and videos. So uh, we get a lot of feedback uh, from people that are really uh, keen on their project and really want it to be the best it can be. So we are really used to feedback. Almost every project gets maybe one, two, even more rounds of feedback. Um, and I think the main way of dealing with it is to uh, view it not as uh, critique, but to view it as uh, a collective effort to make the end product better um, and don't feel attacked when somebody says well I really don't like maybe that instrument or that melody um, just um, take it as part of the constructive pro process of uh, making uh, the project and the, the music better feedback um, it, it depends on the on the client and uh I think I see it as my task as a composer to know what your client wants. That's really important to get on the same page. And I think uh, you have to talk uh, with your client or director and ask him questions about how he sees things. And uh, that way you, you get on the same page. And that's really important. The more you talk, uh, the more you, uh, you ask, the uh, less chance there is for misunderstanding or mistakes mm -hmm. um, and the the director or the game developers they are uh, not musicians or composers so they don't uh, uh, speak in uh, musical language so you have to translate their words to musical briefing and uh, that is an important part of being a composer yeah definitely uh, as a composer for the media you have to translate the stuff that uh, the client is saying and you have to find out okay he's saying well it should be faster but should it be faster or do we just need to add more percussion to give it a faster feel or do we need to add more distortion to make it bigger or uh, so it's it's always kind of a translation of finding out what the client really means 